A couple weeks ago, I got up at 4 a.m. on a Saturday morning to drive to Little Rock for a tech conference. <clears throat> it occurs to me how different 4 a.m. looks today than it did a decade or so ago. <laughs> Friday night, I was busy packing an overnight bag with my three-year-old daughter's favorite blanket, sleepy time bear, and a cute outfit for Saturday, even though I knew Nana would let her stay in her pajamas all day. I kissed her goodnight and gave her a big squeeze before heading home to go to bed early. The alarm the next morning was painfully early, but after a cup of coffee and a sausage McMuffin, my friend Precious and I spent the entire drive to Little Rock talking about nothing, really, until we got to hair. We love hair. <laughs> we, we talk about hair while at work. We talk about hair when we go to lunch. We talk about hair over coffee. So of course we talked about hair in the car. <laughs> Precious is black and struggles to maintain her natural hair. She has no fear at all about wearing hair, wigs and weaves usually. I'm white, surprise. <laughs> and a little more hair adventurous than most of my fair skinned friends. You see, I've had extensions for over a year, you can see them. Uh, it's a line item in my family budget, a non-negotiable line item. <laughs> How many white girls do you know with extensions, other than your hairstylist? As Precious and I talked about the ombre wig she had just ordered and how red was a slippery slope to purple, <laughs> I was reminded of the blonde wig I used to wear at Backstreet in Little Rock more than a decade ago. <laughs> Backstreet was and maybe still is an extra gay bar. You know... <laughs> a little gayer than Discovery, which was the average gay bar <laughs> where drunken fraternity crowds came late on Saturday night for the drag show. Backstreet had cages on bars. It was legit. <laughs> it, it wasn't a lesbian bar either. That was the fish tank on Chester downtown. <laughs> Backstreet was the ultimate gay bar in Little Rock in the late 90s and early 2000s. FYI, and in case you are wondering, Little Rock is the home of the Miss Gay America pageant. We take this stuff seriously. <laughs> anyway, I had this platinum blonde wig cut in a long full bob with blunt bangs. It was so blondy. And I had this micro mini black skirt that was often ironically paired with a conservative sweater from the Limited or Dillard's. <laughs> Saturday night usually started out normal enough. Black micro mini, ironic sweater, brown Monica Lewinsky hair, and four closest friends on the deck at a delightful neighborhood wine bar around 11 p.m. On the deck, lined with paper lanterns and young professionals, we talked about our first world problems and laughed too enthusiastically. Around 1 a.m., and after we'd un run out of uninteresting things to say, the group usually moved to Discovery or Backstreet, which is precisely when the blonde wig came out. I didn't wear it to the wine bar because that would be weird. <laughs> but the gay bar, hell yes. <laughs> There's something about putting on hair. It's kind of like being in the witness protection plan. Somehow it wiped away all my self-consciousness, all the self-consciousness I had about dancing so that I could spend hours of my life on a smoke-filled dance floor in a room that shook and vibrated from the volume of techno music and no one cared about my lack of rhythm, mostly because no one cared that <laughs> no one there was at all interested in me or girls in general. <laughs> Dancing is exhausting. So around 4 a.m., those of us who were still standing, we'd go to our favorite late night bar or early morning, whichever, <laughs> Midtown on Louisiana for a Bloody Mary and a burger because we were young and Sundays were for sleeping all day. Man, I miss sleeping. <laughs> this is how I spent my early 20s. The party usually started at 8 p.m. on Thursday night and didn't stop until 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. It's not clear exactly how I survived those years, but I did, and my hair always looked great. <laughs> The next night, after the trip to Little Rock, I was back home, and my daughter Charlie had just gone to bed. I was sitting on the couch, planning my week ahead, practically writing algorithms to make my work calendar correctly integrate with my family's schedule, when I realized that the photo book Mother's Day gifts for Charlie's grandmas needed to be assembled. It was 10 p.m. on Sunday night. Time for bed, or was it? <laughs> there are days when it seems nothing else can be squeezed into my day, especially those when I get up to write at 5 a.m., get Charlie ready for school or Nana's house, go to work, then the gym, then pick her up, fix dinner, only to fall on the couch with one hour to spare until my own bedtime. But this night, on the heels of the trip down Wig Memory Lane, I decided I didn't have to go to bed at 10.30. So I grabbed my purse, kissed my husband goodnight, and went to Walgreens. <laughs> In the car, 
I played Pink's new song, Just Give Me a Reason, as loud as I could, but not so loud that it would hurt my ears or be unreasonably loud. <laughs> While I waited for my pictures at Walgreens, and after I had picked out the small fortune in Mother's Day graduation, anniversary, and birthday cards that were on my list, I did something wild. I went off list <laughs> and wandered dangerously over to the discount nail polish bin, where I picked out a bottle of Kelly Green polish and a glitter top coat. A lot has changed in 15 years, including what I consider wild. A late night trip to Walgreens in which I bought nail polish that was not on my list is a far cry from the blonde wig and gay bar days. Nonetheless, that green nail polish with glitter would totally look great at the gay bar, <laughs> but it'll look even better on those adorable little three-year-old fingers.